Hi, this is 365A to 1, and we're making a one shot TBR for the one shot readathon. Now, this readathon is running in the middle of 1330, which is hosted by Shay and Izzy and Bree and Ashley. And this one, the one shot readathon, is hosted by Bizarre Individual and Marguerite's man manga. So I. Um, I'm kind of doing this anyway, so I th thought I may as well just make a quick little TBR. So I've got quite a few that I brought up from my second collection that I could definitely read. Uh, but I kind of want to do it as, um, as best I can. Now one of the prompts is to reread a fave. And I know that um, I think Bazaar was thinking about reading Utahime. And Marg is thinking about reading Olympus. So for my reread, I think I will read another Aki title that not a lot of people talk about, and that is The Angel of Ilhamburg. Now, obviously, <laughs> because both of them were like, oh, Aki, hmm. And um, Marg was like, I don't even know who Aki is. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> I had a heart attack. Um, the Angel of Ilhamburg is an absolutely stunning Aki one because it is beautiful. It's got this lovely dust sheet, um, but it's got this gorgeous, rich red uh, hardback cover for this one shot. It is a little bit pricey, like you can see, $14.99 um, for a one shot. But look at the stunning artwork. Aki is known for their beautiful artwork. They are doing the adaptation, the manga adaptation, of The White Cat's Revenge as plotted from the Dragon King's lap. This is, um, at the moment it's got three volumes out. I haven't got volume three yet and volume four is going to be released this year. Um, but that's obviously a series and not a one shot. But these three are the one shots. I have read all of these. I've read everything. <laughs> um, but I think my favourite one is actually The Angel of Ilhamburg. It's a really interesting story set in um, a sort of fantasy medieval setting and it kind of follows two young men and especially one in particular and kind of the perils of ego. It's a cautionary tale of um, coveting something else that doesn't necessarily belong to you and going out of your way to try and get it and just being comfortable and satisfied with your lot in life and being comfortable, uh, becoming comfortable in your own skin and the perils of ego. <laughs> That's what the story is about, which is heavy and deep, but it's absolutely gorgeous and I love it. It's so good. It's got lovely, beautiful artwork. There's an angel, <laughs> but are they really an angel? So it's got a bit of supernatural as well. Yeah. The perils of ego and the absolutely destructive um, consequences of it. But look how detailed that is. Aki has always been able to write and create amazing, beautiful artwork. But she's also incredibly good at writing stories that talk about the interesting dynamics between characters. And she often uses male characters, uh, which is why BL fans tend to love her. But actually, um, some of her stories might have that element, but actually some of them don't. And the the relationships are always a lot more nuanced than just um, Fujo bait. So this one is especially probably the most um, removed from a BL setting. But in the same way, if you're a Fujo, you're going to love it. <laughs> just because if you're an Aki fan you're obviously gonna love it um I do like that she's doing the adaptation but I really wish she would just go back to writing her own story Arisumente um because I want it finished it's a mystery it's in a medieval fantasy setting and um you can't just leave me hanging Aki my love <laughs> <laughs> Give me the good stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the first one that's going on my TBR. Okay, so the first one is reading, rereading a favourite. Got that. One of the other prompts or challenges is to read your newest one shot. Um, now I have a tendency to read one shots straight away. 
um, as I've been doing for this 1330, um, everything that I picked up in March, I'm making my way through or I've already made my way through. So I'm kind of running low on one shot. Um, but I do have all of these packages. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure there's a one shot in them. So um, let's open them and I'll, I'll find out. If I open the one shot straight away, then that's, that's all you're going to get to see. <laughs> Now, I think process of elimination, I think this is going to be a one-shot. I think the rest might not be one-shots. I think they might be other things so um, that are part of series. So we're going to have a wee... Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. It's so sticky. I'm going to need scissors. Okay, find some scissors. Took me a bit of time. Oh, I'm still a little bit uncomfortable. Doing that so close to the book. Yay! I thought it was going to be this one. So this is Glass Syndrome by Eiko Ariki uh, by Tokyo Pop. Tokyo Pop, I purchased so many in March, but I've, I've pretty much gone through them already. Um, so I didn't have many left. And I've been coveting this on eBay for a while now because someone was selling it for £5. I have a digital copy, but I haven't read it yet. So I thought, oh, we'll just get it. Five pounds is really good. So I've got glass syndrome. So this is, along with Angel of Humberg, that's the first two on my TBR. Now I'll have a wee look to see if I've got any others, but actually when it comes to um, new titles or some of the publishers, I don't have a lot of one shots that i don't read straight away that's the problem so we're gonna have a wee search around for some newer one shots one of my newest ones is boys of the dead but i plan on reading that in october so i can't read it just now although it would be a good time to do it and the song of yoru and asa is an encore that means it's the second one in the series so i can't read that either now seven seas do occasionally do some one shots but i've pretty much read all of these except for this one. I started it at Christmas time uh, when I was putting up the Christmas tree but because it was kind of Christmas and I got a bit distracted with other things I didn't uh, read it because I wanted to take my time and give it the um, the time it deserved. This is a, an autobiographical manga about um, uh, Ryosuke Nanasaki um, and it's a based on the book and I really want the book as well this is also published by Seven Seas it's about um, how he met his husband so <laughs> the many relationships and, and trials and tribulations until he got to the point in his life where he had found someone he loved and um, he was able to um, undergo a you know wedding ceremony a marriage ceremony um, with him um, he is a gay activist and that's really important um, it was the first religiously recognised same-sex marriage in Japan, which is a really big deal. Um, I know from living in Japan that the majority of people in Japan would, um, or at least from a certain age under, would like to see um, that people who are in same-sex relationships would get the same um, legal provisions. I think that's really important that you are able to um, make decisions for your spouse if you're able to um, access funding um, that you're able to actually access them if they're in the hospital and um, that you're able to put them on the family register all that kind of thing so I'm really looking forward to it but I didn't want to rush it I wanted to take my time so this is a great opportunity and this is getting added to my TBR. Now when it comes to one shots um, <laughs> There is one particular publisher that I have plenty of one shots to choose from, and that is June Manga. Um, I have quite a lot. There's a couple in here that I would really like to read. The first one is Not Enough Time by Shoko Hidaka, the same author of Blue Morning. Um, and I absolutely love Blue Morning, highly recommend that series. It's really amazing, uh, historical. Um, but this one I haven't read yet, so um, it would definitely be a new one. The other one is over here, and that is New Beginnings by Kotetsuko Yamamoto. Now, Kotetsuko Yamamoto has um, 
her, I mean, she's prolific, prolific. She has been writing and uh, uh, creating manga for the longest time. She has so much in her catalogue. And yet, for the longest time, New Beginnings was the only physical uh, print manga that had been produced. Um, we had a few digital titles and uh, and then we got some on Fitekia like uh, Honto Yaju, um, which is like on, I don't know, <laughs> I've just been, I just been reading them, uh, like volume 13 or 14, something like that. Um, but we did get Toritan, which is only a two volume series and I think that's an absolute travesty. So this is another one that I'm hoping to read as well. There is one more in here that I definitely would like to read and that is a uh, Hyoto Fujiyama spell. Now I absolutely love Hyoto Fujiyama. Hyoto Fujiyama is the opposite of Yamamoto Kotetsuko in the fact that she's also prolific but she was prolific for a set period of time and absolutely everything <laughs> except for the one that I want um, got published. This one got published along with multiple other Kyoto Fujiyama by Juni Manga and yet um, she's kind of fallen by the wayside. She's not as well known as Kotetsuko Yamamoto or Shoko Hidaka. So it's it's kind of a bit like she's of a set time in BL history. So these are three that I would like to read as part of this and part of my 1330. Now there is also um, this particular publisher and that is Net Comics. Net Comics is an interesting one. I have ma majority, they are all series, but there is a few standalones. Um, if we take that out. So I do have some one shots. These are my five that I have yet to read. I've got halfway through Dining Bar Akira. It's one that I'm wanting to take my time with and be in the right mood for. So I'm not in the mood for it. Love those scars that I don't want to read. I'm a little bit scared. Um, Merry Family Plan. I started, I was going to read. Um, and You Don't Know Me. I was going to do an SDM. See, I'm kind of humming and humming. So I think I'm going to go with Merry Family Plan by Sumitomo uh, Morozumi. I don't really know what it's about, but hopefully it'll be cute. So this is one that I'll put on my list as well. So, so far I've got The Angel of Elhamburg, Class Syndrome, Until I Meet My Husband, Spell, New Beginnings, Not Enough Time, and Merry Family Plan. But one of the prompts is to read the oldest one shot now. It's like, is that the one that I've had on my TBR for the longest time? Um, and if that's the case, then it's probably going to be... If I can find it, here it is. <laughs> Hot steamy glasses. Now that's not this particular one. This one I um I purchased. This was one of the first BL I pur purchased and I bought it in uh, Forbidden Planet in Glasgow uh, from the top shelf because all the yaoi because back in the day that's what it was called um was on the top shelf. Because of course all of the the Fujoshi who are going in buying stuff from Forbidden Planet are over six foot tall, obviously <laughs> not. So we have to get the little step ladders and then try and reach up high and, and get them off the shelves. Um, it wasn't this particular volume though, because I bought this uh, with my friend um, in 2008, probably, I think it was. Um, so it was a new release and as you can see this is a little bit of a beat up copy, it's not the same. I got this second hand a few years later because I was leaving to go to Japan and I gave it to the friend I was with when I was leaving. I was like, well it's just a small BL collection at this point in time and I gave them all the way. And I still don't feel bad about it because um, I knew it was going to a good home. <laughs> um, the two of us were always having fun and so this is a really nice one it reminds me of uh, my friend who I haven't seen in a while I know that he's doing really well um, I think he's in a very stable loving relationship with a man um, and so he's doing well in life which is great uh, but yeah hot steamy glasses is um, the 
probably one of the first BL I ever purchased. So that would be the oldest one on my TBR. I know I've read it, but it's such a long time ago. I should probably read it again. Now, if I go to my spreadsheet and have a look to see, now I did bring quite a few of them with me. I went on and I was like, oh, I don't know which one is the oldest, which one is the one that I have in my collection here, which is the one that I have um, that I have not read yet. So is it the oldest I have or the oldest I haven't read? So those are a few that I might want to read. But when I looked, I found that probably the one that is the oldest unread um, is Dost Thou Know <laughs> by Satoru Ishihara uh, Kimishiriya, um, which is definitely looking old fashioned, isn't it? Super old fashioned. So, when does this have it as a published date? Oh, you can hear the creak. So, this is October 2005. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty old one by BL standards. I think we have some um, around 2003, 2004 with Tokyo Pop, um, but I don't have them here in this collection um, and they're not one shots. So one shots that I have not read yet. This is probably the oldest one. Dost thou know? It sounds old. <laughs> So uh, I'll put this on my list as well. I thought while I was there I would check um, other publishers and this one is one that I really want to read or do a reread of and that is Honey Darling by Norikazu Akira. This is one of the oldest Sublime titles um, that they published in print um, and it's one that's lovely. It's about a, a guy who picks up a cat and then ends up living with the vet um, and this is June 2012. So this is actually one of the first ones that they published um, print-wise. I don't think there was many one-shots before that, but I'll have a wee look to see. But this is definitely one that I brought up from my other collection because it was such a long time ago that I bought it that it was in my other collection, it wasn't in this new one. So yeah, this is one that I definitely want to read. It's also a uh, flavour. So I think that's going to be good for, is it May's buzzword? So I will have ticked off that one as well. Now I also have, um, obviously, uh, a lot of digital titles um, that are all one shots. Many of these I have read, but I haven't read for a long time. But I also have a lot of Tokyo Pop titles that um, I have not read yet. So here you can see uh, The Cat Proposed, Katakoi Lamp. Um, these are ones that I haven't read yet, so they could definitely be read. I also have Loved Circus, The Flower, um, I don't know what that one, something about Trudy Dance. This one here I picked up, On or Off is obviously a series, so I can't read that for the one shots, but I think I have a couple of others as well. Yeah, so I've got Tomorrow Make Me Yours and Puppy Love. Puppy Love I got, I think, in January. So that's the the newest digital one that I picked up. So that would be the newest one-shot digital. I think it's a one-shot anyway. So I could definitely read some digital titles too. So that is a TBR. I probably won't read all of this because um, during the 1330, <laughs> um, I have some other things to read as well for buddy reads. And I do have other things I need to do, but this is a really good kind of like mix of interesting ones, uh, rereads, um, and a new title, Glass Syndrome, as well, which I'm looking forward to. But these are ones that uh, are kind of been around on my collection for a while, and I think either I need to read them or I need to reread them because it's been uh, a bit of time. So, yeah, this is my one shot TBR. I don't know when this is going to go up because I'm doing some other things. So hopefully it'll go up either on the 23rd or <laughs> soon, maybe on the Monday, maybe on the Monday. Um, yeah, so hopefully this will go up. This is uh, Bizarre Individual and Margui Manga, um, one shot readathon from the 23rd to the 29th. If you want to take part, head on over to Instagram and check out all the information and um, take part reading the one shots on your TBR. Um, shelf if you've got one. I don't really. <laughs> so yeah, this is me creating my TBR. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much to w for watching to the end. Um, take care everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!